The following program may contain strong language and brief nudity. But don't get your hopes up. After all, this is Public Access TV. This episode of the Gene and Dave Show is sponsored by Art Spark Texas, sparking the creative in everyone, and a mirror group. I'm Gene. And I'm Dave. And we're the Gene and Dave Show. You know, Dave, we're, uh, we get invited by South by Southwest every year to uh, re review their programs. And uh, this year, of course, we reviewed the movies. And I, I want to say first thing, kudos to Southwest, South by Southwest, for bringing all these uh, disability movies to the mainstream. You know, I know, you know, Gene, I know, when we were there, when we were there a couple of years ago, they had a, like a, when they were meeting in person, they had a whole track develop, um, developed uh, for people with disabilities, dealing with accessibility, so on and so forth. And uh, South by Southwest has done a good job at keeping that alive with all of the films and presentations they had this year centered around people with disabilities and accessibility. And we got to see a few of them. So we're going to talk about those today on the Gene and Dave Show. Right on, Dave. Let's start with, say, um, Feeling Through. So, Gene, one of the films that we saw is called Feeling Through. Uh, it wasn't really a South by Southwest film, but we were invited to preview it since we're part of the South by Southwest press. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was really a good movie. It, was, it did deal with a disability. Um, it was about a young man that was homeless and he runs into a guy that is not only deaf, but he's also blind. So mm -hmm. he's a deaf blind. He's trying to get his way home. And this, this young man helps him out and they just, they start a friendship with each other. Um, the probably the most remarkable thing about the film is that the gentleman that played the, the deaf blind person was actually an actor that was deaf blind. So they casted somebody with a disability to play the person with a disability, which is awesome. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and the film turned out to be really good. It's a short film. Um, if you can see it, that would be great because um, it's really a good film. In fact, Gene, I think we have a trailer, don't we? We, we do have a trailer, Dave, and uh, we could play it right now. Let's play that. Excuse me, you Miss White. Ever seen a blind and deaf guy before? Yeah, as you can see, it's it, really well done. Really a good film. I mean, in the 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 guy that helps him out, that the homeless person, he's just he, you know, he thinks he's really down on his luck, and then he meets this guy that can't see and can't hear and it just it changes his life and gives him a whole new appreciation for what he has and we can all use that in our lives right oh absolutely now that uh, deaf blind actor uh, his name is robert uh tarango I, I think i hope i'm pronouncing that right now uh, the way he was communicating with the homeless man is he would write stuff on a tablet uh, or notepad and then show it to the Solomon's gentleman. And, you know, the writing was really clear, easy to read. And I'm thinking, something ain't right here. How could he, you know, being blind, write so clearly? So I, I looked it up, did a little research. It turns out uh, 
Robert was born deaf, but he didn't lose his vision till about age 31. He had a uh, degenerative eye disease. So he could see just like a, you know, tiny pinhole of light. Um, but uh, yeah, at one time he was able to write quite well. So that explains that. And uh, yeah, he just did a fantastic job. And, it, and it's based on a um, true life encounter um, that I, um, I'm thinking the producer had perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was really well done for sure. So we're happy about that movie. Yeah. You know, Gene, another film that we got to watch and we got to see a little behind the scenes interview of the cast and some of the crew was uh, Best Summer Ever, um, mm -hmm. which was a film that was made, produced uh, by a lot of people with disabilities. I think that the crew on this one, there was more people with disabilities than without, um, both on the, both sides of the camera. There were people running boom mics and, um, you know, directing and uh, filming all these things. And a lot of them had disabilities. Um, the, sh the movie was, was pretty interesting. Um, and it, it kind of dealt with the, uh, you know, the people that have disabilities in high school, um, and how they interact with each other. Um, but it was a good film. It was a musical. Uh, I, when I saw it, I kept thinking, man, I've seen this before. Uh, the premise was real close to the musical Grease, <laughs> um, you know, where boy meets girl and they're far off away from each other. And then they come back together um, it, in a year in high school. Um, but it was, it was a well done film and the, the singing was good. Um, I really enjoyed it. We got a preview for it too, right, Gene? Uh, let's check it out, Dave. Let's see if we do. All right. Let's take a peek behind the scenes. Working quietly, guys. Working quietly for rehearsal. The movie degrades people with and without disabilities. <laughs> We're not only saying disabled people should be included in casting. We're saying that disabled people should be included in all areas of production. I'm with you for Boom yeah, Mike, my favorite. Yes, yeah, I have a big one. Take care. Look, we have a bit of 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 a I hope the film will show inclusion, have more conversation about inclusion, and I want to see more films like it. I just want to try to stay in one place for once. I can go to high school here. So what do you think, Tony? Is this the year? Could be. Tonight marks the start of a new season. We haven't won a homecoming game in 25 years. I'm ready to ride. Don't let us down. Introducing this year's homecoming queen. And you'll be my king. There's something off about this new girl. You have a boyfriend? Did meet a girl this summer. We had the most magical summer. Tell us how it all went down. I met a boy up in Vermont. She turned my whole world upside down. This sounds so familiar. Tell me more, tell me more. High school again. Time to sleep in class and be my friends. Summer's gone and nothing has changed. What's going on? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What are you doing here? I faked my resume to Lakeview. But I had to keep up the lie to get through the summer. I want the crown, and you're going to help me get it. And what if I say no? Then I'll put these photos on blast. Dance camp, Tony? Have you ever once thought about what I might want? Tony! Leave behind the way he fell like home. The only love I ever know. Tony, Tony. How about we just go off somewhere together? 
You could be like Bonnie and Clyde. Wait, don't they die? You have to play. You've worked too hard to quit now. It's not that I don't like playing football. It's just not the only thing I'm passionate about. Say you want to dance? You're going to prove it. You know, Dave, I, um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. You know, in uh, any, any movie, let's say you've got actors or you've got uh, characters, you've got a, a doctor, you've got a lawyer or whatever. They don't get doctors and lawyers to fill those roles. So why do they need... I know, people, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for this. <laughs> but why, why do they have to have people with disabilities? play the role of someone that's disabled. I uh, think it makes for a much more accurate portrayal, in my opinion. I mean, you, there's, you know, just some things that you can't act, you know, like muscle movements and things like that. Um, now, I know you were in a, in a movie with Al Pacino and uh, you did a great job on that. And uh, certainly any, I don't know that that, role would have been as much appreciated if they just took an able-bodied actor and threw him in a wheelchair. Right, so, but it still wasn't written for somebody to have a disability. It was just, I was an extra on set and they just pointed their finger at me and said, you know, you're going to be Ned. So I was Ned. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so I wasn't even there for that part. They just kind of... Um, thought I would be good in it and filmed me doing it. So, uh, that, you know, it was pretty cool. Now in the show, the Netflix series I was on called Special, they were looking specifically for somebody with a disability um, to go in and, and be uh, working out in a physical therapy room and having a severe disability. It was part of the story. So I got to play that, I got to play Bob in special, the first few minutes of it. Um, so that was a good experience too. Well, you're a multi-talented actor, Dave, but we, we all know that. Yeah, but my favorite, of course, is co-hosting the Gene and Dave show. <laughs> Absolutely, I can understand that. Okay, so what's next on the... Uh, another, yeah. film that, another film that we saw, Gene, is called uh, Wiggle Room, and it, was very appropriately titled because it does make you really uncomfortable, right? It, it, it does. You know, I, I had mixed feelings about this. Um, in, in the end, the character does something that's morally wrong. Yet on the other hand, I was rooting for her the whole time. <laughs> that's right. Let's watch the preview to Wiggle Room. Hi. I'm here to talk to someone about my claim. My name's Daisy. Did you call? Yes, they told me to come down here and speak to someone. Timeline insurance. Take a number and fill this out. Take a and fill this What's out. the thing, Skip? Get out or I'll call the cops! Call the cops! You spent a couple of hours here. Take a number and fill this out. Hours. Timeline insurance. Come in. Oh man, we can definitely identify with that story. Um, oh. you know, building a ramp or, you know, needing special equipment and having to fight insurance to get it. Oh yeah, yeah, the insurance part is crazy. Um, as we'll see with another movie, uh, that, that we're going to do here, but um, yeah, it, it's so sad, the things that we have to go through just to survive on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, they did a good job of showing all the stress that goes on in the insurance company, too. Um, not just people yeah. on our side of the, the desk, but the people that were on the other side were totally way overstressed and overworked. You're right, yeah. 
So we enjoyed this. Thumbs up for this one. Yeah. Uh, let's see what's next on our agenda. Well, then we saw a few couple things that were related to disabilities. Um, one of them was called, they were more info um, talks. Uh, the future is accessible, accessibility in XR. And this really dealt with a lot of things for accessibility in the, the gaming realm. Um, they touched on a lot of stuff for virtual reality. In fact, they had a guy on the panel that had cochlear implants and it showed him putting on the the goggles to <laughs> to do the vr but it interfered with his implants and it was you know because it wraps around the back of your head where the cochlear implants are and he had a hard time wearing it so it's just something that you know, people don't usually think of but they were writing a lot of stuff into the video games like captions um they didn't necessarily go on the screen at the bottom. They were right where the character was so that you could still read the caption and see the action at the same time. They also talked about color contrast issues. Um, you know, sometimes the game is, you're supposed to step on the red mushroom or something. Um, they're now designing games that not only have the red mushroom, but it has like a certain pattern to it. Like it's, a uh, red mushroom with little round dots and they might have a green mushroom, but it's got square dots. So even if you're colorblind, you can still tell what color of mushroom you need to jump on. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad they're making that accommodation. Um, I've got a friend that's colorblind and he, he's always making fun of me when I yeah. describe something to him and he says, you know, I'm colorblind. Um, but so yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you're really paying attention to this. Yeah, it was interesting. It was it's definitely a, a direction that they're going and um, couldn't applaud them more. It's great. Speaking of accessibility, you know, Gene, both you and I use electric wheelchairs, and I can't tell you how many walls I've hit, um, how many people that I've accidentally like backed into. Um, and there's there's a group that's created. Well, they say they created a wheelchair, but really it's just a peripheral that hooks into the wheelchair that will help you um, help you with these items. It was called reinventing the wheelchair. You know, Dave, the first time I saw this, I really didn't care for it. And then you and I had a chat about it. I went back, I watched the movie, and I, I really, really appreciated it. It's not, the, the name's a bit of a misnomer. It's not about reinventing the wheelchair. It's about reimagining the way people view people in wheelchairs. Uh, for example, there's, um, well, as you were saying, some of these things attached to the wheelchair. So they uh, could detect, they've got a, a device on the back of the chair. It can detect if the person backing up is going to hit something, um, or there's detectors on the front of the chair that can detect if they're coming towards the curb and it'll stop the chair. But really, and I was hoping to see all these technological devices reinventing the chair, but uh, they had some folks with disabilities working on this uh, video, and they said, no, we, we want to do more than that. So when they talked about this one person in a wheelchair demonstrating these devices, they thought, well, let's see, should she just be sitting alone or should, be, should she be awaiting um, a date, say for some kind of romantic interlude? And they decided to go with that option. They wanted to show that people with disabilities um, can be, uh, 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 I guess is a emotionally uh, uh, involved with other people as anyone else. Yeah, as we were talking a minute ago, you know, it's it's really great to have actors with disabilities play those roles because it makes it more authentic, um, and they take it to the next level in this. And that not only are they making it authentic by having disabled actors, 
but they're putting them in situations that they would normally be in, which again, awesome. Let's um, let's show first the technological part, and then let's go and show the uh, a clip from the movie so you get an idea what we're talking about. You know, going back to the car analogy, maybe um, if you go out and get a Tesla, which you can get for about the same price as a power wheelchair. Um, you would expect that Tesla to have all sorts of safety features and technology and work with your pair with your smartphone, um, all those sorts of things. And so um, we really stepped back and looked at safety and connectivity and as a way to increase independence for power wheelchair riders in multiple ways. And so Lucy brings a suite of sensors and adds them and a brain and connectivity to the power wheelchair. And so as we, as we started diving into that, I mean, this is the beauty and the challenge here is a oh, power wheelchair goes everywhere. And so if you think of everywhere you've been in the last several weeks, uh, maybe, maybe think pre-COVID, the power wheelchair needs to go there, it needs to go indoors, outdoors, day and night. It also needs to interact with the modern world, smart home, your cell phone, um, all of the things that you would expect. And so uh, bringing the power wheelchair into the modern world adding technology to it to make it really sort of a hub or an edge device uh, for wheelchair riders. I would love for you to talk a little bit, if you don't mind, about, about what you brought as a creative director to the images and the video that was created when we, from, this was for announcing our company. The one thing that I wanted to make sure that we did when you asked me what I thought about kind of direction of the video is showing people with disabilities in social models, meaning at the beginning of the video, you'll see a young lady at a birthday party, say, and she is thinking she's preparing to go out with her mom. So she has on a jacket, she's kind of prepared and they, she's thinking her and her mom may go out, but then there, her friends are there with her celebrating her. And it is not this apologetic, sorry, sad thing. It's like, she's cute. She's looking good on her birthday and her friends are there and they're going to have a party. Uh, when I, you talked about the technology with Lucy and being able to stop the wheelchair from going off a curb, I thought, hmm, you know, is it more impactful to see the model in the wheelchair actually waiting on someone or just being there by herself? So the idea of having a potential love interest or a date meet the model was really important to me. But you know, the one thing, Barry, that I really, I know I fought for, and you probably got tired of me saying it, is I wanted to show that wheelchair users that use electric wheelchairs, and even, you know, manual wheelchair users can be ambulatory wheelchair users. That's just not a thing that people think about a lot. And I really thought it was important to show that the particular model who was Lauren Spencer, um, I actually have worked with Lauren in other environments as, as my personal styling client. And so Lauren can, can stand with assistance and she can walk a very short distance. And sometimes people don't think about that when they think about people with disabilities. And so I thought that that was very important to show the full scope of the experience of someone who has a seated body type and uses an electric chair. Uh, you know, South by to me was the perfect place. Jared and I talked about it for Lucy. We, we wanted to bring this message to this audience. I mean, you have people interested in fashion and film and music, but you also have tech and gaming and all these people. Uh, and now even in the virtual situation, maybe even more uh, coming to South by your group, what Stephanie's doing and what we're trying to do are all about changing the way things are seen changing the status quo and building uh, bridges to other people. You know, I mean, I, I, we just spoke to a technology uh, uh, class at University of Washington the other day, saying to them, whatever you're going out to do and, and when you graduate, think of our team and our, the group of people we are representing here. And if you'll open a window or build a bridge, we'll be standing on the other side to connect to what you're creating whatever it is, whether it's gaming or transportation or some other thing that I haven't thought of. You know, keep us in mind so that we can build a bridge to you too. We'll, we'll be building on our side. Yeah, so 
So that was interesting. Um, it, it's Project Lucy, L-U-C-I, that, that's doing all this technological advanced stuff. And uh, you, you can see from the clip we showed uh, what it's capable of doing. And then they showed how this uh, woman that's using uh, this wheelchair is, is semi-ambulatory. She can get up and walk to her chair. And one of the people working on the film thought, it's very important that the audience know not everyone is permanently disabled. Right. Not everyone that uses a chair has to be in that chair all the time. And, and then they showed how uh, I mean, you could use uh, your, your iPhone to uh, uh, do certain things with this wheelchair. Um, it, uh, you could use a Alexa uh, to determine if your battery is fully charged. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like this, this movie. Lots of new innovative ways to help the, the wheelchair that really should be on the wheelchair already. Uh, you know, they compared, I, they compared having an electric wheelchair to, to owning a Tesla, which I thought was a very good, accurate, yeah, because they cost about the same, right? But you right. don't get all the technical advances in a wheelchair that you get in the Tesla. You know, it's not, it's not connected. Uh, your wheelchair is not connected like the Tesla's connected. And with this, they're trying to make it be more connected to the internet and the people that are using it. So I hope to be a product tester someday. <laughs> well, that would be cool. You'd be great at that, Dave. So we'll put that on our list of things to look for. Absolutely. So Gene, by hands down, our Oscar winning, our Gene and Dave show, Big Thumbs Up Award has got to go to a film that I laughed. I even cried. Oh, yeah. um, man, it was, it was very, very emotional. And anybody that's protested anything in their lives, whether it's through ADAPT, our friends at ADAPT, or, or you know, the coalitions for Texans with disabilities, you really can identify with, with the individual in this film. Um, and it's the name of the film is not going quietly. Uh, well, Gene, you haven't went quietly. <laughs> no, Dave, you know, I think you should be required viewing by uh, every applicant, not just in the disability movement, but but whoever's championing a cause out there, uh, this gentleman, uh, Adi Bark Barkin, and a little bit of a backstory on him. Hey, Carl, it's me, Dad. By the time you're watching this, you will have grown up to be strong and courageous, but I don't know how much longer I'll be around for you. I was diagnosed with ALS today, which is a deadly debilitating disease. After I was diagnosed, the president passed a tax bill that put my health care at risk. So I went to Washington, D.C. My next guest made headlines when he confronted a Republican senator on an airplane. You can be an American hero. I wanted to help create a better country for you to live in. Democracy is beautiful! Democracy is beautiful! All that matters to me is to make you proud because I'm already so proud of you. Hello, America. My name is Audie Barkin, and I am speaking to you through this computer voice because I have been paralyzed by a mysterious illness called ALS. Like so many of you, I have experienced the ways our healthcare system is fundamentally broken. Enormous costs, denied claims, dehumanizing treatment when we are most in need. Since my shocking diagnosis, I have traveled the country meeting countless patients like me, demanding more of our representatives and our democracy. Today, we are witnessing the tragic consequences of our failing healthcare system. 
In the midst of a pandemic, nearly a hundred million Americans do not have sufficient health insurance. And even good insurance does not cover essential needs like long-term care. Our loved ones are dying in unsafe nursing homes, our nurses are overwhelmed and unprotected, and our essential workers are treated as dispensable. We live in the richest country in history and yet we do not guarantee this most basic human right. Everyone living in America should get the health care they need, regardless of their employment status or ability to pay. Even during this terrible crisis, Donald Trump and Republican politicians are trying to take away millions of people's health insurance. With the existential threat of another four years of this president, we all have a profound obligation to act. Not only to vote, but to make sure that our friends, family, and neighbors vote as well. And that was one of the mo that was one of the real amazing things about the film is it started when he was diagnosed, and you you really got to see how it it took a toll on his body and his lifestyle and just everything around him that changed. You know, in the beginning of the movie, he could he could speak, and by the end of the movie, he had to use uh, assistive technology to to voice these opinions that he had. Yeah, now we have some uh, clips he did with uh, Jimmy Kimmel and some of the producers on the show. And uh, I don't know how they got Jimmy Kimmel involved, but you might remember, Dave, a few years back, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's uh, newborn baby, uh, Billy, would, had some special needs. And so Jimmy Kimmel was trying to navigate this labyrinth of uh, health care uh, options or barriers, if you want to call them that. And, and he took it publicly. He was on Twitter and he was on his show talking about health care reform and such. So uh, they did some interviews with Audie, and I think we can show a clip of that here. So, Audie, um, the big message is that. Millions of people have to make heartbreaking decisions as to whether to keep their loved ones alive or whether to go bankrupt, which is insane that that happens in this country to people, to a person who has health insurance, who has good health insurance. Um, the, the gaps that are there are oftentimes insurmountable. So I guess my question is, what what changes specifically do you see as necessary to fix our broken health care system? We live in the richest country in history. We can afford to guarantee that everyone gets the health care they need. The simplest, cheapest, most equitable way to do that is just to enroll everyone in Medicare. We can get rid of all the waste and the bureaucracy and just let the doctors and nurses focus on taking care of their patients and let the patients spend our time getting healthier getting good medical care, and being with our loved ones doing the things that bring us joy. Our time on this earth is the most precious resource we have, and we shouldn't waste it on the phone trying to navigate health insurance bureaucracy. We should spend it playing with our children and grandchildren, taking walks in the beautiful American outdoors, or, even better, we should spend our precious time watching handsome comics make stupid jokes on late-night television. That is what Medicare for All will make possible, and I know you agree that that is a future worth fighting for. So, no, I am not optimistic about the future. I don't have a prediction about how it will go. But I am hopeful about the future. And here's the difference between optimism and hope. Optimism is an opinion, hope is a spur to action. Hope is not a lottery ticket that we cling to, it's a hammer that we use in an emergency to break the glass, sound the alarm, and spring into action. Hope is not a state of mind, it's a state of action. And so, yes, Jimmy, I am filled with hope that the American people can rise to the challenge. Our future remains totally unwritten. But we are the authors of that collective future. We hold the pen. It is our story for the writing, and I know it can be a miraculous tale. And, Jimmy, 
let me just end by saying that I am so grateful that you have spent some of your precious time learning about my story and helping me share it with the world. Yeah, that was now great. We've got Gene and, now we've got uh, Jimmy Kimmel working for us on the Gene and Dave show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. our, our reporter in the field. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> and, and then Artie did such... Uh, uh, he was just so inspiring. Uh, I, I know you you drove um, to Albuquerque. You were the sole driver. Yeah. Watching the Albuquerque. And I know that had to take a toll on you. Oh, and, uh, it did. And that was just a couple of days. And this guy spent months on the road. So, wow. Yeah. Um, it, so he really ought to be applauded for that Herculean effort to go on that road trip. And... Um, yeah, when he when he found he tried to see two senators in Arizona, and they practically slammed the door on him. It, it was sickening. It was sad. It was just terrible the way these senators were treating him. But then, by coincidence, um, Adi, uh, I believe, was in D.C., and he got on a plane, and one of those senators. Got on the plane on the well. same plane, yeah. So they were able to film Audie having a conversation. Yeah, so we Gene and I both highly recommend this movie. If you know you get a chance to see one movie that we've talked about today, definitely find Not Going Quietly and watch it because it, it is amazing. I promise that you won't be disappointed. You know, Dave, earlier we talked about. Uh, insurance frustration. Uh, Artie was getting to the point where he needed some type of breathing machine. So his doctor wrote him a prescription and uh, Artie tried to get it taken care of through his insurance company. And his insurance company turned him down. Yeah, saying, how can you deny somebody that needs a breathing machine to breathe? I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, they, they said it was experimental. But if you ask all these doctors, uh, they, they said never in the six years that they have been prescribing this have, has anyone ever been turned down for it. So uh, go figure. Great film and a bunch of great films this year at South by Southwest. Thank you to all those people at South by Southwest that invited the Gene and Dave show in. Uh, we had a great experience. and. Uh, looking forward to next year. Yeah, let's uh, let's end this day with a with another clip from "Not Going Quietly" because it it really captures Audie's uh, character and his ability to deal with the situation. And uh, it, I think it's a good a good feel good clip for all of us. So here it is. Fantastic. Yeah, that was now great. We got Gene and, now we've got uh, Jimmy Kimmel working for us on the Gene and Dave show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's our, our reporter in the field. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> and, and then Audie did such... Uh, 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 he was just so inspiring. Uh, I, I know you, you drove um, to Albuquerque. You were the sole driver. Yeah. Watching the Albuquerque. And I know that had to take a toll on you. Oh, and, uh, it did. And that was just a couple of days. And this guy spent months on the road. So, wow. That was an amazing road trip across the country. It was the summer of 2018. And we traveled from California to Maine, stopping in 30 congressional districts to help mobilize the country to fight back against Donald Trump and the Republicans to take back control of the House of Representatives. So here's what I know about the impact of that road trip. First, I know I made some lifelong friends, and we had a blast from dusty towns in northern Nevada to the glistening cornfields of Iowa and the bustling streets of Brooklyn. Second, I know that that trip was raw material for a great buddy road trip flick, featuring stone s'mores, hot shower scenes, and some never-before-seen footage of Bernie Sanders and yours truly. And, third, I know that we were part of a wave of millions of Americans who volunteered their energy and passion to accomplish together something amazing, which was the preservation of our democracy. 
I am so glad we went on that adventure. What a great trip it was. Yeah, um, it, so he really ought to be applauded for that Herculean effort to go on that road trip. And um, yeah, when he when he found, he tried to see two senators in Arizona and they practically slammed the door on him. It, it was sickening, it was sad. It was just terrible the way these senators were treating him. But then, by coincidence, um, Adi, uh, I believe, was in D.C., and he got on a plane, and one of those senators got on the plane. On the same plane, yeah. So they were able to film Adi having a conversation. Yeah, so we, Gene and I both highly recommend this movie. If you know you get a chance to see one movie that we've talked about today, definitely find Not Going Quietly and watch it because it, it is amazing. I promise that you won't be disappointed. Great film and a bunch of great films this year at South by Southwest. Thank you to all those people at South by Southwest that invited the Gene and Dave show in. Uh, we had a great experience and uh, looking forward to next year. Yeah, let's uh, let's end this day with a with another clip from "Not Going Quietly" because it it really captures Audie's uh, character and his ability to deal with the situation, and uh, it, I think it's a good a good feel good clip for all of us. So here it is. Fantastic. You know, Jimmy, I had been living this perfect life. I had a brilliant wife a beautiful newborn son, and a great career fighting for racial and economic justice. We lived in beautiful Santa Barbara, California, and could see decades of happiness stretching out in front of us. And then, out of the clear blue sky, we were struck by the lightning bolt of ALS. So, ultimately, I had to decide how I wanted to spend my final years. I had to decide what really matters most to me. And I thought long and hard about it. I talked to Rachel, and, in the end, I just reached the conclusion that what is most important, above all else, is being famous and making a lot of money. They said that I could be like a reality TV show star, and I said yes, because, you know, Jimmy, I am really not here to make friends. I am here to win, and that is really what it's all about for me. In different people, here I come baby. I wear crocs on my feet and fruit of the loom you know where, and if either of those wonderful companies is interested in an authentic spokesperson, I'm available. There you go. Oh yeah, I get emotional just watching the preview. Um, it was really a good film. Again, I can't stress enough. You've got to see this film. It's really great. I guess we'll see you next time. Uh, see you next time on the Gene and Dave show and don't forget to look us up at the Gene and Dave show.com you'll find all the information from this episode films some links to the previews and anything else that you'd want to know thanks folks bye now mom afford to have help preparing her meals we know what you're going through Amerigroup has a plan for people with Medicaid that helps them get the services they need to live at home Amerigroup. Choose us for helping your loved ones live at home. Call 1-800-964-2777.